Hey guys, Professor Bill of Comic Book University here for another Nerdarchy Takeover. Now, we're going to be doing, as usual, two builds. The thing is, the first one is a build, it's the quick one. The later one coming up, there's a little twist on it, regardless. We're also going to be talking a little bit about comic books and whatnot. Okay, so listen, check it out. Let's just start off right now. I made Groot last week, right, as my quick build. How about this week, let's make Rocket Raccoon. Okay, so I thought about it a little bit, and you know what, like, I'm thinking way too much in regards to it. He's basically a little freaking raccoon who blows things up all the time. It's not that hard, you know, especially if you're using the Guardians of the Galaxy movie version, right? So how about this? Let's just go with the knoll, okay? No, seriously, you get the claw claw bite. Sorry, I'm still talking like I'm in uh, advanced second edition, right? Claw claw bite instead of multiple attack. No, 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 it's claw claw bite. So, uh, <laughs> use the fang of uh, Yinagu, and don't Please don't correct my pronunciation. Oh, that's the worst. It's drizzed. It's drizzed. It's shut up. How about that? Look, use a fang of, um, use the, the null fang of Yiranu. And uh, this way you've just got the build. Now the strength is a little bit high. So my recommendation, take a couple points off his strength, throw it onto intelligence. Okay. He's cute, but his charisma is still really low. Remember, he's an a-hole. He's a guardian of the galaxy. Now, when you're going to do this, you're going to start. Uh, you're going to look at the idea that he's a challenge level four. Throw those those challenge points. Throw them into levels four ranger. Okay. In the comics, he's a space ranger. He's actually a very good guy in the comics. Uh, modified because of the movies, but for the most part, he was always a good guy. <laughs> All right. So, uh, a couple points for for ranger. This way, you know, in, instead of bow, use for gigantic guns and things like that, but you get the gist. So where's he getting that firepower? I sat there and I racked my brains over and like, should we do artificer? Should we use wizard? Should we do like just a whole bunch of enchanted magical items? What should we do? I was like, you know what? Just make him a sorcerer and flavor it, pepper it, reskin it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like it, it, destruction is in his blood, right? That's that sorcerer. So just give him all sorts of fiery explosive powers like like Tim the Enchanter from uh, uh, Quest for the Holy Grail, Monty Python. You know what I'm saying? Literally just boom, boom, boom. But he's got to actually use his his guns can actually be his his spell focus. <laughs> so literally as simple as that. And just have some fun and make him blow stuff up. If he's not blowing stuff up, it's not rockets. There's your flavor. Okay, all that good stuff there being said. I'm going to switch over to my... Pa oh, good. Right there, baby. Right there. Okay, so we're going to be talking about a couple of comic books here. Now, first off, and I'm going to be talking about these comic books because they're actually going to help out with campaigns. All right, check this out right here. We got uh, No Justice, Justice League No Justice, issue number two of four. All right? Uh, I know there's a glare. And we've got Avengers issue number two. Yeah, there, there's a restart. It's not really a reboot, but it will help you if you want to jump on both of these very early. You might not know the characters in here. You'll, for the most part, know the characters in here. Uh, the trick is that this one is actually a lot easier to follow along than this one. But both of them have their own unique pepper here. Uh, the Celestials are an ancient character that um, uh, Jack Kirby actually created a long, long time ago. Right after he left DC Comics. So... Uh, the, the Celestia, that's the big head that you see there. Yeah, that's actually the least of their problems. <laughs> so, uh, there's these creatures called the Final Host. They're actually like the progenitors, progenitors to the Celestials, it seems. They're wicked powerful. And these heroes have to go and try and figure out how to save the Earth from these beings, with the Celestials actually apparently trying to help because these final hosts are actually trying to kill the Celestials too, ripping their heads off and everything. It's it's wicked. Now here there's something very similar. They're doing these things called the Omega Titans. Now, although they just introduced these Omega Titans, they're brand new characters starting with issue number one. The idea is that it's it's interesting. It's extremely interesting because these heroes, who are actually more powerful than the Marvel heroes, everybody knows that between Marvel and DC, DC just dials the, you know, turns the dial up to 11, at least 11. But what they do is they realize that these final hosts cannot be attacked directly. So there are certain things that they have to do, certain little missions that will weaken these more powerful beings so that they can be stopped, either directly or indirectly through more you know, smaller missions. That's actually a really great concept. So I'm going to highly recommend, I'm going to recommend both of them. 
you know, but I'm going to highly recommend No Justice, issue number one, two, three, and four, because, you know, and, and I don't have uh, issue number three and four yet because they didn't come out. This one just came out this week, but highly recommended because of what it's offering. Um, also something else uh, as far as comic, uh, excuse me, comic book to Dungeons and Dragons uh, mission level, because I mean, where are you going to find better missions than the comic books, guys? Right here, New Challengers, issue number one from the New Age of Heroes. These guys are dead. They died, okay? But when they died, they had certain skills that they were very important. So they, even though they're dead, they're given these little, um, these, they look like they're just regular tattoos on their left forearms. And they said, hey man, uh, we're going to send you out, or I'm going to send you out into the real world and give you your life back while you're in the real world. But you'll have a certain number of minutes added on for each mission. So... Uh, this way you can go out and, and accomplish these missions, and if the time runs out, well, you die. But if you finish the mission with some time left when you come back, then I'll be able to, you know, give you more more uh, minutes on there. I want you to think about it. it. doesn't matter what the missions are they're being sent on for you guys. No, for you guys. Just think about that. What a great concept that is. So it's kind of like um, No Time or whatever the heck that, that movie was with Justin Timberlake, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's kind of like that, except with a serious twist on it. This is really cool. I'm totally digging this. So consider checking out the comic book. Worst case scenario, use your brain. Think of some way to do something along those lines. I love that concept myself. So I'm also going to recommend two other comic books this week. The Brave and the Bold, issue number four, just came out back here with Wonder Woman and Batman. They're going to tear in the nog, and it's, you know, like there's the Fomori are there, and just so many, like Baylor is the, the bad guy that rears his ugly head here. We're talking Celtic mythology that's just going to blow you out of the water. If you can't find D&D missions out of this, you're not paying attention. I think you might be reading with your eyes closed. It's that good. It's that intense. And mind you, it's Batman and Wonder Woman. Batman's not in Wonder Woman's League power-wise, so he's got to... This is a mystery also, so that's one of the, the best things about the Seelie and Unseelie courts and all that stuff. It's not about killing the bad guys. It's about solving the mysteries. That's excellent in here. There's a, there's a murder mystery that has to be solved, and who's responsible in this place where everybody loved this king? Okay, and, and also Aquaman. There's issue 36, right? Yeah, there's issue 36. Um... You can't just jump on this issue. You got to actually go back like 15 issues or so. But I'm telling you, you could make an underwater uh, battle here, but you could just do so much with everything that was that's been presented uh, here. So uh, go back and check out, see when the trade paperbacks have released. If they're not too expensive, they'll have like six whole issues inside this trade paperback at a very affordable rate, very affordable uh, price, a lot cheaper than the comics individually. But there's so much campaign idea in this amazing, and we just changed artists about four issues ago. Back when this uh, story arc first started, oh, forget about it, man. This was the like the best art you could possibly imagine for an other undersea adventure. So whether you're going to have Koatoa involved, if you're going to have Troglodytes involved, if you're going to have goblins holding their breath, whatever you're going to have, this is the greatest underwater campaign I could have ever possibly imagined. But you could easily figure out a way to do this um, on the surface also if you wanted. But why? Why would you? Anyway... Really good stuff. So the final comic book that I want to point out to you guys here is Countdown, Infinity Countdown, Daredevil tie-in, issue number one. It's actually a one-shot. There is no, not going to be an issue two for this tie-in. Um, this comic book by itself, you don't need to read it. But understand what's going on here. Here's this guy, Turk. Okay? Turk is this guy that, that uh, Daredevil's always beating up on to get some information from him. Well, Turk has Kingpin's uh, uh, his staff right there, his cane. And on top of there, that's the Mind Stone. Yeah, you know Thanos uh, in the Infinity War com uh, movie? He had the Mind Stone, or you call it the Mind Gem from the original comics. Now they're calling it stones in the comics also. The movies are old, the movies are old. So anyway, the idea is that he found it. It's the weirdest thing. There was some, like, he's a regular Joe Blow guy. And he found this thing because he was trying to do some kind of an Uber scam. Follow me along here, okay? There's a great story arc. Um, he was just doing this little Uber scam where he's in an Uber, a rideshare, whatever. And when he gets used to some of these customers, he knows they live alone. He'll, like, ask him. It's like, oh, live alone or, you know, seeing anybody, you know, saying whatever. And, and he'll get the idea, hey, 
it d does this person live alone? You know what I'm saying? He'll, he'll find out, does this person have a dog or something like that? And it's apartments in the you know local city or whatever. So when these people are actually out, he's able to text to someone and be like, hey, such and such address I just picked them up at, nobody's home, go hit it. You know what I'm saying? So, so certain prospects, so like just a typical scam that Turk is always getting himself into. Well, while he was out doing that scam, there was a huge battle. It's New York City. There's always some kind of a huge battle, huge battle. And these, these scrolls and these other, you know, heroes are all fighting. And all of a sudden, um, right in front of him, there's the Mind Stone. Now he doesn't know what the Mind Stone is. He has no idea what this thing can do, but he runs outside and just thinks, oh, I can hock this thing, you know, for a couple, you know, for a hundred dollars or something like that. He grabs it and he drives off. And as he's holding it, he realizes he can read the girl's mind in the back seat. What? So he doesn't realize all the other unbelievable powers that the Mind Gem has. He only knows what it can do for him now. So that alone, I want you to think about how you can transition a MacGuffin or multiple MacGuffins, some small little thing that actually has immense power, but nobody knows it because, you know, even identify spells. I mean, unless you identify it, you have no idea what it does. This could be a plus five Holy Avenger for all you know, but without an identify spell. And even then, it's only going to give you what it's able to give you. It might be a plus five Holy Avenger, but you just don't, you know, intelligent, but you, your spell might not work the way that you want it to, where it's just like, oh, well, the answer is blah, blah, blah. No, the judge, the DM doesn't have to give you all of that information. So you, as the judge, could consider that. Put down this unbelievable artifact of power, such as the Mind Stone. And then you turn it around and just like, oh, yeah, you get this. You can do this with it. Oh, cool. So I've got this little trinket that I can read people's mind with. You know what I'm saying? Or like it, it casts geas, you know, three times a day or just whatever, something along those lines. Even put a little, you know, a little twist on it. Oh, I uh, I get three or five extra recharges for something if I kill someone. You don't have to give it to your players. Give it to a local, you know, criminal who's who's maybe not as you know he's not artemis and Trieri level he's not even like uh what was artemis and Trieri's boss's name pasha pook you know, he's not even pasha pook level he's just some jabroni you know what i'm saying Who, who's just trying to get along but he gets this artifact and he doesn't realize it's an artifact he just thinks it's a standard magical item that he's lucky to have even gotten his hands on doesn't realize how lucky the poor sap is but more than that there's going to be people coming after him so Knowing how powerful he is, without him knowing how powerful he is, the heroes have to find a way to rescue him and get that, that item back, try and find out, and, and they've got a little bit more information on what it could do, but even then, the main bad guy, your main big bad behind the scenes, really knows what it can do. And that's gonna what's going to turn me, uh, pull me into uh, the story about my final character build. Let's talk about Thanos. Oh yeah. Guys, it doesn't matter what you make Thanos. Make Thanos an effing god. Thanos, in reality, you, you can go to Comic Book University uh, on YouTube and you can check out Thanos Explained in a Minute, okay? Uh, it's actually like a two and a half minute thing or whatever, but Thanos is an eternal, which is when the Celestials, yeah, those guys, when they came to the uh, to the Earth, they, they took regular humans and gave them evolutionary capabilities. They took uh, uh, some humans and they made them into deviants and mutated them extensively. That's kind of where we get mutants from, but this is a very different offshoot that are radically mutated. And then they took uh, these other characters who were eventually, be uh, these other um, humans, which they would eventually call the Eternals. These creatures, these beings, they were brought to the fullest extent of the highest part of evolutionary process imaginable. So these three, and these were supposed to be the experiments to see what would happen, like what are the fullest potential of the human race or the scroll race or the Kree race or the Shi'ar race or whatever race you're talking about in the Marvel Universe. So the vast majority are going to be humans or, or just regular people who have evolutionary capabilities. They'll be the Deviants and they'll be the Eternals. Guess what? Thanos is the first ever um, uh, eternal deviant from the, the, the moon of Titan off of Saturn, which these guys actually come from Earth. So to think that T Thanos actually has a, a, a direct reference back to humanity, he's, he technically would have been a human if he would have stayed on Earth instead of being moved out there and his mom, Suisan, and, and, and his dad uh, just, you know, bring him out there. But, like, he's the first mixed 
uh, deviant and eternal, which is one of the reasons why he's so ridiculously powerful. And then death gave him boons. And then when he went and got his hands on like the cosmic cube or the soul stone, the soul stones at first they were called, and then he renamed them to the infinity uh, gems. That became something. That became something. So let's just have whatever some ridiculously powerful character. You don't know the race or anything like that. Who cares? Feel a sneeze. <laughs> and there it is. So um, you just have this ridiculously powerful character. The trick is he's getting his hands on these totally awesome gems. What kind of gems could they possibly be that nobody would realize that's what they actually are? They're just, there's something that they just seem really standard. I got this idea. Yeah, the slides. Dude, I'm just saying. Just imagine that there are special slots, okay? There's always gonna be, the, there's the, the red, the blue, the green, the, the gray. In the back, you got the death, okay? There's these five kinds of slots and you know how to get the gems out. Just go to your uh, monstrous manual, monster manual. I'm still, th again, dude, I'm steeped in second edition still, advanced second edition where you got the monstrous compendium. But go to your monster manual, which is what it always should be called, page 274. Check out the slot. They're like they're leveled so perfectly for a higher level campaign. So again, first you start off with the Turk idea from uh, Infinity Countdown Daredevil one shot, where you just got this one gem that's sitting there. And it's like, oh, nobody really knows what it can do. This guy found out it can do like a couple of little you know doohickey things here and there. When the players get a hold of it, because they're actually intelligent, most of them depends on the character build. They actually figured I could do a lot more. Turns out you have no idea what this thing is capable of doing, but absolutely have a history check available and all sorts of different checks so that you can realize this is actually a slods, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, control gem. So all of this can lead into something powerful where somebody is actually, uh, for, for years, like the high evolutionary, that sort of an idea, has been breeding, just going around like a, like a little slod gardener breeding the slods, you know, using genetic, you know, patterns to try and get the perfect slods of each of the colors. And then once he finds that they, oh, they're perfect, man, then he's going to try and take their gems. How sick is that? And then once he's got all of them together, maybe he can make the infinity gauntlet. Maybe he can make some giant, you know, giant slod like a, like a, a, a gaiju, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A kaiju. You... Do whatever you want to do with it, but that's the big thing about it. F Thanos. Thanos is simply the hair, uh, the 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 airbinger of this great, incredible, like this Tarask level. Okay, maybe not that that big quite, but just something insane where people are gonna go. This is the craziest mission I've ever seen. Where literally this could start off at level one. And then over time, you come back to the story that has been progressing, right? And eventually this guy's going around, he's trying to figure, you know, he's trying to go back and, and find all of it and, and get his gems. He's already got a couple. Oh, the player characters have one. I'm going to come and get it. That's the first time that you meet this guy. And it's like, dude, this guy literally just walked all over us. Holy crap. And then you start to learn more and more as time goes on. Little things, like there's other other um, beings, like let's say you got this, this goblinoid tribe that's investigating this guy because they're high shaman or better off make them orcs all right so this guy of this this orc of high orc shaman of groomish all right he comes along and he's just like oh yeah this guy's been doing some stuff with some slod like they they attacked us at one point and then we realized something about him because they lost some some relics and oh we we, we found it we investigated and it turns out there's this guy that's been breeding these let's say they're, they're the green slides whatever you want um and they've, you know, it turns out this guy's been breeding these guys. Let the player characters figure out through their mystery solving that it's not just the green ones or whatever color you want, the, the, the red ones for all I care. Somebody's been breeding all of the colors. Have some fun. Make there be a sixth color also, besides the death ones, you know what I'm saying? Make it a lower level. Make it one that's fifth level so that you could bring them closer, fourth or fifth level, you know what I'm saying? Bring the challenge rating down of this different kind of, like this, I don't know, a uh, purple with, with fuchsia polka dots. I don't care. You get what I'm saying. Make this so that it's just like they're, they're trying to, you know what I'm saying. They're trying to collect all of these gems before this big bad does. So he, before he can become the bigger bad, right? Anything, anything along those lines. I thought that was fantastic. Just thinking about the infinity war 
And then just thinking, and, and for some reason, slides just came into my mind. And yeah, oh my God. Somebody have a wish spell, get this thing out because it's, it's annoying. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. Guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed.